Alrighty, uh, today I'm going to show you guys just quickly how to export a few models from uh, League of Legends. Um, pretty easy. Uh, there's a brand new tool that was just released called LOL to GLTF. Uh, it was released maybe 29 days ago, I think. Um, and it makes life so much easier trying to do this, uh, especially for the cosplay community, trying to get a good view of the game uh, and what models exist. So um, the first thing you're going to need to do is download these two tools. Uh, Obsidian will allow you to export the models from League of Legends. Um, allow you to get the files and everything that you actually need. And then lol 2 gl uh, will actually go ahead and convert those uh, league-specific models into a standard format, which is called GLTF. Uh, this works with Blender and a bunch of other standard sort of 3D uh, frameworks out there. Um, so to download these, we can just go over into the releases page uh, of the GitHub. You'll notice on the right-hand side, we've got the releases tab there. Just open them up. And you can probably just download the most recent version for uh, uh, that, it, that is listed. So, you know, if you've got 2.1.1, it will probably still work very similar. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to download the portable edition for both of them. Uh, in this one, I'm going to download the UI just to keep things simple, but you can download the command line only if you want as well. And these will take only a few seconds for me to download, which will be good. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to navigate over to where my league is installed. So we've got, uh, in this case, uh, G Drive, Games, Riot Games, and then League of Legends. Um, and this is where the, the files for, for League is. And you'll notice that you've got the League client.exe in there. I've got Obsidian in here sitting from previously. You don't have to put it in there, but I've got it. Um, and, and that's all the files we need. So uh, what we're actually primarily looking for and what we're going to be extracting is in the game, data, final, and then every sort of .wad .client file in here is what we're going to look at and potentially uh, extract files from, which is where our, our skins and models and sort of stuff uh, that sort of stuff comes from. You'll also notice that there's champions, uh, and then in here you should see a bunch of WAD files which are related to each champion. Uh, keep in mind that some can have files for other champions, like for example, the, the Zyra here has files for um, a bunch of other uh, champions in there as well, um, because that's just when that particular patch happened to be released to, and they only wanted to modify that file. Okay, so just do be careful with that, but it should be pretty easy. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the two zip files that we got. Uh, that we just downloaded, and I'm just going to extract them both off onto my desktop. Just a simple drag and drop will do. Um, and, and that's really all we need. We just need the two files, um, and we can work with them. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is open up Obsidian and actually uh, navigate over into uh, this URL uh, that we've just, just sort of found here. So we'll go File, Open, and then pretty much I can just copy the URL, or you can navigate there again. That's That's fine. Um, and then we can pick a champion. So uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to go Zyra. Um, pretty cool champion, so let's go ahead and pick Zyra. Um, and we can see a bunch of different uh, things that are sort of related to, to Zyra and her sort of, uh, you know, the files that are needed for her in the game. You also notice that when we open up the assets and character folder, uh, we have a few different things here uh, listed. So we've got Zyra and then the different plants and passive and all that general stuff, which all have different models. Um, and then we also have Pike and Camille. Um, this can happen sometimes just with the way they patch, um, and it is a little bit annoying, but you know, it is something to keep in mind um, that you, know, you may have other champion files that you need uh, in, in other ones. But for now, in this case, we just want Zara, so we're just going to export Zara there. You'll see that we've got a .dds file, that's the texture. We've got a uh, .skn and a .skl, they're the uh, model and skeleton, so the actual way to animate the, the models. And then we've got a bunch of animations here as well. Uh, so we're going to just export it all. You only have to export the animation, uh, DDS, SKL, and SKN to make this work. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to export all of the uh, Zara stuff. Um, and that's that's realistically it. There is a few other things in here that you could get, uh, but most of this has all been data that we don't really care about too much. We only care about the models and that sort of stuff. So that's why I'm only exporting that folder. And then we just go File, Export, uh, Extract, select, Selected. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and export it to my desktop, and we'll just say uh, leave export, create a new folder for it, and then select that folder. That will go ahead and do its thing. It shouldn't take too long. And then uh, we should see those uh, files that we just exported. Uh, in this case, I can view these DDS files just because I've got an extension stored. You may not actually be able to view them here, uh, but you'll be able to uh, look at them in either the Obsidian tool, uh, if you just mouse over them, uh, sorry, if you just select them. So for example, the ZyraCircle.dds, uh, we can see all the different uh, the textures there and they are a little bit blurry when they're in preview. Um, but the reality is a lot of the league stuff that you're gonna be exporting is uh, pretty bad quality just because of the, the nature of the game being relatively efficient. 
Um, so you can see all the different textures and stuff. You can always export these and uh, translate them to PNGs and stuff if you did want to use them as well. Um, but you know, primarily uh, the the ones that we mostly care about are the the ones for the actual skin, so we can actually see exactly what the skin looks like exported. Okay. So I can close off Obsidian now. Don't actually need it anymore. We have all of our files that we need uh, within our Zara folder, which is what we're going to be working with. The next step is actually grabbing uh, lol to gltf and opening that up. And then remember that this one is the UI uh, edition, so dot UI, uh, which will allow us to sort of select the files and work uh, in a little easy use, easy to use interface that will make this a little bit easier. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is select the SKN file. Now this can be done for the specific uh, skin that you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be the base skin, which is what I'm going to select here. Uh, so you could say, you know, skin five, uh, which may have, you know, the uh, the files that you need for that specific skin. Um, in this case, I'm just going to do the base skin and use the Zara.skn file. And then the skeleton, which is what actually is needed for the animations. If you don't need the animations and you just want a T-pose, then that's fine. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to import it because I want everything. And then we have a bunch of materials that are required. Now, in this case, there's only one for this particular uh, champion, but for Nico and, and other champions that have a little bit more uh, related to them, uh, you may notice that they've got multiple uh, materials that are required, and you have to pick the specific one uh, for that particular name. Now, in this case, Lambert 2 is just referencing you know, one material, but in Nico, for example, it might have you know, Recall Tree, uh, Butterfly, and then, and then Base as well, and you'll have to select the specific ones for that. Uh, so if we go back down, uh, I'm actually going up a couple directories to get the base textures here. This does, uh, it is a little bit different than the other ones. They may actually, or well, they should be in the, the, the folder with it. Uh, but for Zara, for some reason, they're, they're separated out. And what you'll notice here is we've got a bunch of different DDS files which have the base keyword in it, which suggests that that's the, the texture for the actual Zara character. And then they're in different file sizes. So we've got 128, uh, 129 kil, uh, 65 kilobytes, and then 17 kilobytes. In this case, you want to pick the biggest one because that will be the highest quality most of the time. And then animations, we can go ahead and load them in. So skins, base, make sure you load the animations for the, the skin that you've picked. And then we can just go ahead and select all of the animations that we want. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna select them all because I can. And we'll click open. And we've got all the animations selected. So you should have pretty much everything filled out, uh, which, is, which is cool. And then you click the convert button. Choose where you wanna save it. So in this case, I'm gonna go uh, League Models. Uh, and we can just export uh, Zyra underscore base uh, on, in that folder. Take a couple seconds. And then we should see, uh, in this case, there's, there's three files, but every texture that you would have selected will be exported as a .png for you. Uh, so in this case, you'll see that I've got the uh, Zyra texture there. Uh, we've got the actual model, which is the .gltf, and then the .bin, which has all the animations and information about the model. Uh, you know, so that's uh, pretty much everything you need to be able to view. And you can actually view this in 3D Viewer built into Windows 10 straight away. Um, so you'll notice that we've got uh, Zyra here, um, all ready to go, super easy. Um, it's, it's amazing how quick it is with that new tool from um, uh, from Croza. Uh, and you know, this was only released 29 days ago, which is great. So uh, this has made it a lot easier. It used to be a pain in the ass to get all this stuff merged together. So uh, let's have a closer look. Um, there is a bunch of animations that we selected in this case, uh, 3D Viewer doesn't actually give us the name of them, it just lets us select specific ones. Um, and we can sort of have a close look at, at each animation. Uh, we can pause between them and we can sort of uh, get a bit of information about the character and, and how they move, uh, which is you know really great for cosplayers and, and that sort of thing. Um, the next step here is uh, being able to use these models in uh, Blender. And a lot of you guys, you know, a lot of people prefer Blender uh, to be able to sort of work with 3D models and, and clean them up a little bit and maybe 3D print them. Uh, that's exactly why I'm exporting them is because I want to 3D print them and, and make them look cool in some statues. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is actually, you know, import this into Blender and, and have a look at how we compose the character properly in Blender. And it's actually really quite easy. Um, you know, if you don't need to do any custom posing or modeling, um, you can just import it, pick a, pick a frame in the animations and work with that. Uh, so in this case, I've opened up Blender. Again, you don't have to necessarily do this. You can just use the 3D viewer if you just want to have a look at the character in a bit more detail. Um, but in this case, you know, I, I want to 3D print them and I want to clean up a few things and uh, sort of get a good pose that I can, I can actually, you know, manipulate with the sculpting tool and get a, a good quality print that will, uh, you know, that will look really good. So uh, in this case, I've gone in, uh, come into to Blender. I've deleted the standard cube that comes into Blender. You just press delete on the keyboard or right click and uh, delete or just X. There's three different ways of doing it. Um, and then we're gonna import a GLTF file and that's the same format as uh, what we just exported. We're gonna go ahead and find that, which will be on league export, oh, sorry, uh, 
league models, and then we've got zyrobase.gltf. Load that in. It might take a little bit to load. It's a surprisingly delayed process, this. Um, just keep in mind that you know you want to keep these three files all next to each other because they do all relate to each other. Um, so if you start moving them around, it may not find the texture and it may not be able to, to load properly. So just keep, make sure you keep all of those files together. Um, and as we can see, we now have uh, Zyra being imported, uh, which is pretty cool. You'll notice that you know I was originally zoomed in way too much and I couldn't really see Zyra, but just zooming out with the scroll wheel will we'll show up Zyra and, and reveal uh, her, her true nature. Now, um, Obviously, there's a few things here that we, we don't have yet. We don't have a preview of what she actually looks like. Currently, it's just a 3D model without any uh, texturing on it, which is kind of useless. Uh, so we can come over on the right-hand side here and pick uh, the viewport shading, or we can pick the, um, the render preview as well, uh, which will give you a higher quality uh, view. Now, you'll notice that there's a few things here that are uh, slightly annoying. Um, the first one is all of these bones that are sort of looking out and being gray. They're actually really easy to hide. Um, you can just go down into the uh, armature option here and just pick a, a different layer off and they'll just go away and, and hide away. Still work fine, but uh, you know they'll, they'll hide away. The other thing we'll notice is that everything is inversed. So if we look at a face uh, from the backwards, such as the, the actual face of the character, uh, it's, it looks fine, but if we look at it from the actual front, it's completely transparent. And uh, this is because the normals uh, on this, this particular model exported, so the way that the faces are supposed to be facing uh, is actually inverted. Uh, this can happen sometimes, it's not too hard to fix. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go in and select the mesh. So you'll notice I've gone down a couple layers there and selected the mesh. And that's gone ahead and put us in edit mode and selected all of the vertices uh, as part of this particular character. And that's what those little uh, orange dots are there. And we'll come in and we'll go ahead and we'll say, okay, we'll mesh, uh, normals, and we can just go ahead and flip uh, the normals. We can go back into object mode uh, and we can have a look at the character in its proper form now, uh, which is which is cool. Now we can see everything that we can do uh, with the character and, and sort of work with work with uh, that. Now the next step is actually going ahead and having a look at uh, the animations for this character and having a bit more information on on Zara's movements and, and that sort of stuff. Um, you can switch over between the, the layout view to the animation view. Um, and in this case, you know, again, we're just going to have to switch back into our viewport shading so we can see Zara a little bit more detail there. Um, and we can actually scroll through the animation and get a, uh, get a close, click, quick look at the standard attack uh, animation that, that uh, comes with the character. But if we want to have a look at some of the other animations, we've got to switch over into the uh, nonlinear animation tab. This will give us a list of all the different animations that exist in uh, Zyra. And we can go ahead and star ones that we want to actually have a look at. So for example, if we want to have a look at Zyra's jerk, we can just star that and we can scroll through it and, and have a look at uh, the movement uh, as part of that, that character. Uh, we can scroll into other ones as well, like spell two. Uh, we can see what that looks like when they cast spell two, um, et cetera. So it, it's pretty cool to be able to view all this and, and have a look. Um, and then from this pose here, uh, you should be able to export that pose um, as it is and get a, an actual 3D model that you can potentially 3D print or something like that, um, which is which is awesome. Um, that means that you know printing printing a pose like this in a 3D printer is is quite easy because you know you've realistically already got the pose made for you and you don't have to create the model or anything because you've already got it. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's all I was going to really show. Um, there's no need to save or anything like that. Uh, you can save if you want to um, as a .blend file, which will make it a little bit easier to open next time you want to view the character. But uh, you don't really need to do that. Um, you can just sort of open up the GFL, uh, GLTFW, GF. GLTF file, God, that's a confusing name, uh, and you'll be all good to, to go. Anyway, uh, that's all I was going to show, and hope you guys have uh, some good fun exporting models from League.